Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Ukraine's Prime Minister says there will be a third world war if Ukraine loses its conflict with Russia, as he urges the US Congress to pass a long-stalled foreign aid bill. Denis Shimhal expressed careful optimism that US lawmakers would pass the hotly contested measure, which has $61 billion earmarked for Kyiv. The House of Representatives is set to vote on the package this Saturday. The proposal includes funding for Israel as well as the Indo-Pacific. This is not the first time Ukraine has issued such an alarming warning about the consequences of its potential defeat. Qatar's Prime Minister is reassessing its role as a mediator between Israel and Hamas. Uh, ahead of, of the escalation, uh, we've been in an intense conversation. Qatar has had a key role, along with Egypt and the US, in trying to secure a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas and the release of Israeli hostages. But Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani said Doha had been exploited and abused. Attempts to secure a ceasefire have been delicate and largely unsuccessful, but the links Qatar has with all sides, including close ties to Hamas, are regarded as crucial to achieving any breakthrough. United States President Joe Biden has called for a tripling of tariffs on some steel and aluminium from China. It is the latest protectionist policy to be embraced by Mr. Biden as he campaigns for re-election against Donald Trump, who was known for his tough trade stance against China. The White House said the proposal was aimed at protecting U.S. jobs against unfair competition. Prices are unfairly low because China's steel companies don't need to worry about making a profit because the Chinese government is subsidizing them so heavily. Look, right now, my U.S. trade representative is investigating trade practices by the Chinese government regarding steel and aluminum. If that investment confirms these anti-competitive trade practices, then I'm calling on her to consider tripling the tariff rates for both steel and steel. Operations at Dubai Airport are still severely disrupted as heavy rains continue to batter the United Arab Emirates and neighboring countries. The storm pounded the UAE on Tuesday, flooding roads and sections of the busy international airport. Flash floods have now killed 20 people in Oman and one in the UAE. Some inbound flights have resumed on Thursday, but on the whole, Dubai International Airport, a major travel hub, is barely functional. Scientists say a deadly heat wave in West Africa and the Sahel was impossible without human-induced climate change. Temperatures soared above 48 degrees Celsius in Mali last month, with one hospital linking hundreds of deaths to the extreme heat. Researchers say human activities like burning fossil fuels made temperatures up to 1.4 Celsius hotter than normal. A separate study on drought in southern Africa said El Nino was to blame rather than climate change. A number of countries in the Sahel region and across West Africa were hit by a strong heat wave that struck at the end of March and lasted into early April. The heat was most strongly felt in the southern regions of Mali and Burkina Faso. Prince Harry has officially listed the US as his primary residence, according to documents filed in the UK. The change was revealed in a filing for sustainable tourism charity Travelist, which was founded by Harry, recording the Duke under his full name, Prince Henry Charles Albert David, Duke of Sussex. Harry and Meghan have lived in California since they quit roles as senior working royals in March 2020. And a group of ballerinas have broken the Guinness World Record for the largest assembly of dancers on point within a minute. Three, two, one. Dancers gathered at New York City's Plaza Hotel for the attempt. The ballerinas had to remain on tiptoes in unison for over a minute. The 353-strong group beat the previous record of 306 ballerinas on point, set in 2019. It's about um, giving for children something and giving for young dancers something meaningful. I need to make sure that they are in very prof professional ballet clothes and shoes and that they need to stand on point simultaneously in one minute. Means that they cannot drop in, they cannot drop off their toes. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos.